I received a wide variety of questions recently that could be solved using an underutilized feature in Cubase, the Project Logical Editor. Let's see what it can do. The Project Logical Editor can be opened by going to the Project menu and selecting Project Logical Editor. When we look at this, it could be a bit perplexing and confusing, but it's pretty easy once you understand some of the concepts. It has three main functions. We could delete, transform, or select different events. We have a filter target where we could add what type of events and we could have further refinements on what type of events we want to process. And the action target is how it is actually processed or changed. I remember having a discussion with a uh, known DJ and producer Zed, and we're talking about using kick drums as like a sidechain input on tracks. And he often felt that a lot of times the kick drum samples themselves were too long to be really useful. Uh, so let's take a listen. So what he wanted to have was a way to have the kick drums be much shorter. So. In, to accomplish this, we could select transform. We go to our filter target and we're gonna say our media type is equal to audio. And how we want to change that is we'll select length and we'll multiply and we could just put in a value of 0.1 for instance, and then hit apply. Working with tempo is often problematic for a lot of people because they may want to take a passage and slow it down or speed it up or change the pulse. So if I have a tempo map and someone wanted to perhaps slow down the tempo to 50% play a passage and then go up to the normal tempo and still re retain all the tempo changes, we could do that by selecting transform. We'll say our media type is equal to tempo. And at this point, we're going to say trim in the action target, and we'll just say divide by two. And now our tempo will be halved, but still have all the changes. Another question I've received, and we'll just undo that, is people that want to change the pulse from a quarter note to a dotted quarter note, and realize that the tempo has to be adjusted accordingly, so often by a 1.5 interval. So here I'll just choose to, we're gonna take our tempo information and we'll choose to multiply that by 1.5, and again hit enter, and we can see that the tempo changes will reflect those changes. There's a lot of powerful automation functionality that could be handled with the project logical editor as well. Let's say I get a project and I need to delete all of the panning automation. So what I could do is I'm going to choose delete as my function. We're going to say our media type is equal to automation and we could do further refinements on our filter targets. So I will come here and we'll say the name contains pan. And what we want to do is just choose to delete that. So now I've defined that we're going to delete our panning automation, hit apply, and our panning automation has disappeared. If we undo that, let's say if I wanted to take all of the volume automation and be able to trim it. So let's say my gain structure has gotten a little out of hand. I need to bring everything down with all the automation. At this point, we could say we want to transform and we're gonna say our media type is equal to automation and our name contains, we'll type in VOL for volume and we want to trim the automation. So we'll multiply, let's say by 0.9 and now I could just hit apply and we can see all the volume automation change. Naming conventions can be very important for your session. So let's say we have names and someone has named all the tracks BD, but you really prefer kick drum. So we'll choose to transform. Let's say our, we want to have our name and let's say our name contains the word BD. 
And what I want to do under my action target, we'll go to the name category and we will say replace and we'll choose kick. So right now we see BD close and BD far. So we could do that. I'll hit apply and anything that had the name BD in it is automatically renamed. But if I wanted to keep the close and far, if we undo that, we could just change this to replace the search string. So now in parameter one, I'll say BD and we could now just come here and say replace it with kick. So as we do this, we'll just choose apply and now we could just replace those particular words. If I wanted to rename all the tracks, I could choose my filter target here as media type is equal to, we'll say our container type rather, is equal to tracks. And for name, what I want to do is to prepend, and we'll just put in something silly like DJ Smash, and I'll put a, a space. And now as I do this, all my tracks can be renamed, or I could do a prepend or an, or an upend or, you know, generate different names. So really helpful, useful naming conventions. When working with large templates, sometimes our composers will have lots and lots of different tracks going on. And they may have a template set up so that as they have their template defined, they can have access to all of their sounds. Now, often they may not use all of the sounds and that still can take up a lot of memory and computer resources. You could go through and selectively disable tracks that aren't being used. So what I want to do is to do a, a project logical editor function for this. So what I want to do is we're going to say, we're going to say our container type is equal to a track. And we want to have the property is set to event is empty. So at this point, what I could do is we're just going to say apply and it will find all the tracks here that are empty and automatically select them. Now, one of the things that we could do with the project logical editor is kind of have it automatically trigger a macro. So I'm going to go to my key commands and let's create a macro. So I'll just say new. Okay, and I want to find uh, one of the functions. It's just a disable, enable track. So I think it's under my audio. And we're just gonna add this particular command to the macro. So I'm gonna undo this particular function. So when we come here, I wanted to now trigger the macro. So we'll close this and we'll open it again. And we'll just have this automatically disable track. So now it's going to select every track that is empty and automatically disable the tracks. So as we do that. So now these tracks have been unloaded from memory and don't take additional CPU resources. So as you can see, there's a lot of fantastic functionality found within the project logical editor. So if you take a couple of minutes and work with it and start with some of the presets and kind of backward engineer, you could do many powerful things. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.